Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. I'm sitting here trying to get dressed this morning because we have found a plan. Now this was not an easy plan to find. We have been in the state of Alabama where it has been a bit more challenging to find campsites that are closer to larger cities and major attractions. And last night we went through it for a while. We were on our websites looking around trying to find the perfect spot so that we could enjoy the state of Alabama's natural spaces. And well, let me just show you what that was like. We're sitting in Riley's car tonight and we're trying to figure out our next moves and it is not great. So we're looking through and we found this national forest, which is close to a place that we want to go. It's the Bankhead National Forest. And we were thinking about staying at an actual campsite in there so that we could make sure that we are in the right because they have some strange rules. So we found right here at campgrounds, Corinth and Clear Creek. Unfortunately though, they are not open while we are here. Ugh! Alabama, we're trying to give you money and it's just making it real, <laughs> real hard. The wild part about this is we have been trying literally all night to figure out what we're going to do here in Alabama. And with their regulations on where you can sleep, it makes it a little bit harder. So you most likely need to get a paid campsite, which is fine. We're trying to do that. But to stay at a state park, which we would go to for like one day, it's like 50 something dollars. But the problem is every site that we have gone to is requiring us to book two nights which means that to stay at a state park which we only spend one day in we're gonna have to spend two nights there so the math is not math and too well so cracker barrel has been our best friend so far and we've picked out another cracker barrel for our next stay and oh my gosh I just want to spend some money here. I just want to show you guys a good time. I just want to see the beauty because this state has a lot of beautiful things, but it's really hard when you're a fast paced mover to actually find something. And free campsites are kind of difficult. In fact, we were looking up some iOverlander things and let me just show you. In theory, this looks like a lot of places, right? There's dots everywhere. But when you start actually zooming in on the areas that we're going to be going to, one of them is in this area over here. And as you get closer and closer and you see, for example, this Gadsden area where there's a falls that we want to go to, which interestingly enough does have camping, but it's currently closed. We go up here to this one and it says here, killer campground with all the amenities. Cool. But when you look at when it was last reviewed, even it's not super close to that time. So the reviews in Alabama are kind of outdated. It's kind of hard to find any that are more recent. And so we were looking at some of these other spots and this one right here said that they stopped for a night in their mini camper two months ago. Well, when I looked up this site, it actually said it's a paid campsite. It's not a free campsite, which again, okay, cool. But then the more that you start diving into these, the more that you realize that in comparison to some place like, mm, let's go over here to the west, where there's tons of free campsites, and we know that, um, you'll notice that these numbers are much higher. There's orange and yellow, and so as you're zooming in, there's literally dozens upon dozens upon dozens of campsites. But in these areas, again, over here in the Alabama area, it's mostly green because there's not that many of them. What does that mean when we're planning a camp? It makes it real hard because since there's not as many, that means more people are trying to look for those. And we've noticed a lot less camper vans here. In fact, with the exception of the place that we went to at the Ironworks, where it was a very packed campground, we've noticed that there haven't been as many people even on the roadways through this area. And I would like to think that people are recreating here because clearly the campgrounds are packing out. But it's not been the most van friendly. We'll just put it that way. We also noticed on their state parks that they don't allow a van of any kind to stay in a primitive site. Now, whenever I go to Missouri, I stay in primitive sites all the time because I don't need any amenities. All I need is a good toilet that I can go and walk out to use. But the primitive campsites here, even with the regular amenities that are at other places, they say, nope, you can't stay there. You have to be in a physical tent. That has also changed since the last time I came to Alabama when I actually was in a tent. So that's kind of fascinating. 
So Riley and I are just trying to figure this out. And unfortunately it is frustrating. At the same time, Cracker Barrel, with the exception of the one in Tuscaloosa, has so far been friendly with to us. So yeah. I have all these great suggestions from people. So many great suggestions, but I don't know, maybe it's just me and I am being a little weird, but I don't see the point in paying $100 for a campsite. I just don't, I'm not going to do that. Ugh. I've stayed too many places that are absolutely amazing that have not been $100 for two nights. And I'm not opposed, again, to paying for campsites, but I think that there is a difference between paying for campsites that are worth it and not. And we just saw at the Ironworks, the sites were $25 a piece. And in doing so, you had water and full connections for $25. So if they can do that, then there's no reason why a state park can't do that in this area either. But instead, campsites are upwards of $45 to $50 and they're literally in the same state. So we're just gonna go back to the drawing board. This is gonna be a weird night of just sitting here trying to figure this out. And maybe in the morning we'll have something determined, but we know tomorrow we're gonna go and see a beautiful waterfall and we're gonna stay at a Cracker Barrel. Now, as you can imagine after seeing that, it was a little discouraging, but last night after I left Riley's car, I gave it one last shot and I went over to Campendium and I looked up website information for the areas that we had kind of considered. Now, Alabama has a lot of natural spaces and the Northern section specifically is beautiful. You get into a very nice, almost mountainous region that is kind of connected to the Appalachian Mountains. So we were thinking originally we were going to go east toward that. However, whenever I came back to my van, I did a quick search of Campendium and then referenced it with YouTube videos from people in Alabama going on short waterfall hikes, short outdoor, like family friendly things to do. And I found a region that previously we had seen a few campsites, but when we expanded upon it, there wasn't a lot of information. And I found that there was more updated information on Campendium. Now, normally I consult several sites. I start off with iOverlander or Free Roam, and then I move over to the dirt and then sometimes Campendium or freecampsites.net. Those are all great resources for you finding stuff across the United States, but in some areas, some of those are a bit more lacking than others. Now, whenever I pulled up Campendium, it showed me all the paid sites and all the free sites. And so I had to like really wade through it to get to what I was looking for. But I think I found something perfect. So, I am about to get dressed so that we can hit the road and we are going to go toward a national forest. We're finally not going to be at a Cracker Barrel and I'm so excited because Alabama and their newer rules have really made it a bit more challenging. I'm never going to say it's hard because you can do it, you just have to do a little bit more due diligence, but challenging is a good word. So. With that said, it is not a weekend, so I'm hoping that there is availability. So cross your fingers. I hope this works out. Hi, Cracker Barrel. You've been good to us. Thank you for letting us stay here. Following Riley, and we're going to go get a few things before we head to the National Forest. Okay, so this morning we decided we were going to come over and get some supplies before we head out to the National Forest. So we decided to come to Walmart, because why not? They have pretty much everything that we could possibly need here. And we're probably gonna sit still for a couple of days because in all reality, the search for a campsite has been difficult at best. So now that we think we found one, I think we are going to take advantage of it as much as possible. So we wanna cook a little bit. We wanna have a nice, quiet, relaxing existence, just enjoying the outdoors. And there's some waterfalls over there too. So we'll probably take some short hikes, but for now, supplies. I went ahead and just put the things we just picked up at the grocery store inside my fridge and I have some drinks in here I still have some rolls from last night and then this is my loose stuff that's a bit big I'll probably end up collapsing down some of the packaging for that but right now it's in a good place Riley's over there getting all packed up now too now it's time to get in the van and figure out where we're going so while Riley is finishing up I am going to locate our campsite 
and try to get a map pulled up and make sure it's going to be a doable option. Time to get ready to get a bit closer. I think there are two campsites that I found that had really good reviews. I think one of them is free and then one of them is paid. So I'm gonna look at both of them to see which one I prefer. I don't even mind paying for a campsite. I've said that hundreds of times on my channel. I'll pay for something as long as it's decent, but if there is a free option, that's always a nice one to explore also, but it really is about finding the place that's gonna give us the most retreat at this point after being on the road as long as we have been already without really having that super peaceful, just relaxing stop. I go really fast when I travel on the road and that's not for everybody. A lot of people like to sit still. That has never been my journey. My journey has always been about movement. So whenever I get out and I'm starting to travel, I like to see a lot of different things. But the problem with that sometimes is that it comes at the cost of going through larger cities that aren't always great for beautiful, amazing campsites. And that's okay. But I think that I am long overdue a little bit of a retreat from this. And it's supposed to be warm over the next couple days. So it would be nice to just be able to have a comfortable place near some waterfalls possibly. Riley needs to go into PetSmart to pick up a few things for Tyson. So we're doing that and then we're hitting the road. It's going to be about an hour and 50 minutes to our site. I for one am ready. Wow. It has been a day already. We've done so many things. I got my gas. We got our groceries. Riley's doing this. And just driving in the traffic itself is just a lot today. It's been, it's been interesting. So I will not be sad to get away from the city for now. I don't mind coming to the city. In fact, there's a lot of really cool things in the cities that you can do. I love going to museums, specifically in the Birmingham area. There's some really nice things, including some really beautiful botanic gardens. There is this giant statue that you can go and visit in town that's like overseeing the area. It's kind of fascinating, but also they have a lot of different stops along the Civil Rights Trail. And so you can see various points of interest there. And so cities do have their value. And I really get discouraged when people say, oh, I just hate going to cities because there's nothing there. There's just traffic. Because there is, it's just how you look at it. And whenever I first started out on my adventures, I actually did so by going to local places near where I am in Texas. And many of those things happen to be in cities. So I think that that's one of the things that we can see as value. And even though the camping situation has been kind of frustrating, I do still enjoy a good city moment. I just want to get away from it for just a few minutes to decompress and to see some nature because I am craving nature right now so much. harder to see right now but it is definitely hazy there's some smoke in this area not sure what's happening definitely smells like fire right over there though and that's where it's coming from so I'm not sure if it's a prescribed fire or if something bad is happening but we're gonna keep our eye on this as we're driving we turned off and we're going toward our location and we have once again found the haziness. It's a little harder to see, again on camera, but it is very noticeably hazy in this area. And it wasn't when we first turned down this road, so we're going toward it. I think it's kind of off to the left. So I'm hoping that it's not like some kind of prescribed fire or something like that. That would not be bueno. I didn't see any warnings when I looked up his site, but you never know until you get to an area, but I do have a backup site just in case. So cross your fingers, guys. The area has been hilly, it's been nice. It has been very pleasant to come out to this area. After we got out of the city, it was just immediately much more calm. The roads through Birmingham, were crazy though, super chaotic, and oh wow, um, it was just a lot, it was a lot. Everyone drives 
about 15 to 20 over the speed limit, which I didn't think was a thing, but I was getting pushed. And even if I would try to be not going over the speed limit, people would literally surround you and push you. And that was unsettling because once you start going over the speed limit with the box, you start rattling a little bit. <laughs> no, no, no ma'am Pam. Not my, not my cup of tea there. But we're only about 15 miles away, so I'm hoping this turns out. In the meantime though, it's been a pleasant departure. Some interesting old buildings like that one, a few homes, lots of woods. And through here you can see it is a bit more hazy. Okay, as we're going through here, it looks as though this was probably a prescribed burn because you can see the ground looks a little like it has more recently been burned off. So they probably are wrapping this up, which is why there's still smoke. So we're gonna go ahead and check out this campsite. If it's really smoky and bad, we'll go to the other one, but we'll see. Otherwise, it's a beautiful drive down here. After all of the hard work, it paid off and we were able to find a beautiful retreat away from Cracker Barrel. Again, Cracker Barrel is a great place to go whenever you need it, but this is what we really were looking for, something more like this. This is a forest camp that's only $5. It does have a vault toilet. They have trash here. They have picnic tables, fire rings, and lots of space to spread out. And then there's also a boat ramp, apparently, I think kind of over there so there's a trail so we're gonna explore and just enjoy ourselves but I'll be sharing all of this with you guys on an upcoming video so you can see what we get into while we're here and also if we enjoy it but for now we're just walking it out to make sure we got the best possible camping site and so far so good I'm gonna keep exploring and I'll see you guys on the next one remember guys we're not here for a long time but we are here for a good time finding places to explore, to stretch out, to discover, and to enjoy are definitely that. I'm going to leave you with just a few scenes from this campsite, but I don't want to give away all of its secrets just yet because there's a lot of fun to be had here, and well, I'm here for it. Till next time, guys. Bye!